personal attacks on their character yeah. or anything like that. It, it, it's kind of like picking names out of a hat. And if your name rhymes with something good, or ha you know what I mean? Then <laughs> Eminem is known as the king of B for a reason. Aside from the fact that he lyrically destroys his competition, their careers are usually never the same. In some cases, the artist may recover. Other times, it appears as if the whole world has turned their backs on them. Here are some popular music artists that made the mistake of getting into a beef with Eminem and paid with their careers. Starting with Machine Gun Kelly, MGK suddenly stopped rapping after his beef with Eminem. But in his defense, MGK did switch to pop punk, which is a different music genre. And he did pretty well. That even though he had a great rap career as a rap artist until he locked horns with Eminem says it all. It all started in 2012 when MGK made a lewd remark about Eminem's daughter on Twitter. The tweet said, I just saw a picture of Eminem's daughter, and I have to say, she is hot as f in the most respectful way possible. Cause Eminem is king. Most people say that this remark led to the lyrical war between the machine gun and Eminem. MGK was 21 at the time while Eminem's daughter was 16. MGK claimed in an interview that he settled things with Eminem's team. After this, MGK continued to talk about a hypothetical beef with Eminem in interviews, especially in the 2015 with Hot 97, where he suspected Eminem of blackballing him in the rap industry. MGK was of the assumption that Eminem had close ties with his label. Scope and could influence the label to place him on the shelf. MGK also felt his music wasn't being played on labels like Shade 45. I'm my favorite rapper alive since my favorite rapper banned me from Shade 45. I wonder. Because of Eminem, the king of rap had been quiet the whole time and didn't come out to speak. In 2017, Kelly dropped a subtle diss on Eminem while featuring on Tech 9s track No Reason. The young rapper said, I pop cherries and pop stars. Popsicles is not hard. Popped in on the top charts. Out the cop car to remind y'all, you just rap, you're not gods. This line was interpreted as many as a disrespect to Eminem's rap god, which it pretty much was. Eminem dropped a surprise album a year later called Kamikaze, where he made fun of the young rapper for his sneak diss on Tech 9s track, and how MGK made the mistake of mentioning his daughter Haley. MGK of course responded with a diss track called Rap Devil, where he aired his opinion about Haley and how Eminem tried to end his career. Eminem wasted no time in hitting the studio, because barely two weeks later. He dropped the second diss track on MGK called Kill Shot. He threw a lot of punches at MGK that won over the general public, but the bone of contention remained whether Eminem had MGK blackballed. This is what Eminem had to say. Like I'm trying to hinder his career, so I give a f about your career. You think I actually f think about you? You know how many f rappers that are, are better than you? You're not even in the conversation. I don't care if you fucking blow or if you don't blow. After Eminem's accusations, MGK showed up in an interview with The Breakfast Club and said that everything Eminem had said was untrue. It is still unclear who was telling the truth, but based on the charts, it was clear that the fans were rooting for Eminem against MGK. MGK confirmed that he had another diss track in the bag, but he wasn't going to release it because he felt Eminem was weak. He revealed on Twitter that the track was called Leg Shot, as fate would have it. His career completely faded after that. However, the multi-talented young musician had a plan B, which was rock music. MGK dropped the EP Binge, which did pretty well. He decided to work on an album that would define his next direction music genre-wise. The name of the album was Hotel Diablo. When the album dropped in 2019, it didn't do as well as his previous album. MGK came out to talk about how flawless the Diablo album was and how it talked about his evolution as an artist. However, it came at the cusp of a sour beef with the industry's favorite rapper, even though MGK is doing quite well with his new fan base under the pop punk genre, his beef with Eminem certainly crushed his rap career, causing him to make the switch. Next, we have Benzino. Back in the old days when magazines were the pinnacle of hip hop, the Source magazine rated albums by giving them one to five mic ratings. When Eminem's album, the Marshall Mathers LP, dropped in the year 2000, it was an all-time favorite. However, the source gave the album two mics out of five. This happened a year after Eminem dissed the magazine for giving one of his favorite music groups, The Outsiders, two mics out of five. After fans showed their disgust at the ratings, the source changed the Marshall Mathers album rating to four out of five mics. Eminem's next album, The Eminem Show, also received four mics, and Eminem started to suspect that Benzino, the co-founder of the source magazine, had an issue with him. Benzino admitted to the accusation, saying, 
saying that he did block Eminem from getting five mics, but ironically, he was giving his own albums five mics. This greatly affected the credibility of the source. Benzino saw Eminem at a show in Puerto Rico and wanted to interview him. Eminem rebuffed his request, and that set the stage for the beef between the two music icons. Benzino first dissed Eminem with his song, I Don't Want To. After that, 50 Cent was asked to host a show at Hot 97, and sure enough, Eminem called in and requested a Benzino track. He even said, play that one for me if you can find it. You may have to dig deep in the trash can. Benzino was very much up to the task and dropped a diss track called Pull Up Your Skirt. He referred to Eminem as 2003's Vanilla Ice and talked about hitting Eminem's mom. The beef continued as Eminem got his pound of flesh with the 2002 tracks, The Sauce, and Nail in the Coffin. Eminem appeared to be the fan's favorite, so Benzino figured he needed to go harder. He dropped Die Another Day, where he went as far as threatening the life of Eminem's daughter, Haley. One of the verses said, Tell Haley that it ain't safe no more. Daddy better watch your back at the candy store. You f***ed up. Resort to plan B around and she'll end up like John Benet Ramsey. Haley was seven years old at the time. During the course of their career, both artists continued to make diss tracks about each other. They even created a rivalry between XXL Magazine and The Source Magazine who both took sides. In November 2003, The Source reported finding Eminem's old tapes where he used racial slurs, alleging that the rapper was a closeted racist. They played bits of the track at press conferences and planned to release an album of all the racist songs. They were later unable to release the tracks because of Eminem's lawsuit. Eminem came out to address the tapes and said, The tapes they played today was something I made out of anger, stupidity, and frustration when I was a teen. I had just broken up with my girlfriend who was African American, and I reacted like the angry, stupid kid I was. I hope that people will take it for the foolishness that it is, and not what somebody is trying to make it to into today. Eminem fans accepted his apology as it went public in 2005. After that, Benzino quit his position with The Source magazine. He specifically said that the beef with Eminem was one of the major reasons why he couldn't stay. Although Benzino had successes in other endeavors that he moved on with, it is safe to say that his beef with Eminem killed his career with The Source. Next is Nick Cannon. The beef between Eminem and the host of Wild and Out, Nick Cannon. Cannon started way back in early 2000 when Eminem was first throwing shades at Mariah Carey. Eminem claimed that they had dated while Mariah denied it. They continued to bump heads until 2008 when Nick got married to Mariah. The following year, Eminem dropped a track called Bagpipes from Baghdad. A verse in the track said, Mariah, whatever happened to us? Why did we have to break up? Nick, you had your fun. I've come to kick you in your sack of junk. Nick took it very personal and went on Tumblr to air his grievances. He even went back to the age-old racist tapes many mentioned earlier. That was the last that we heard of their beef, until 10 years later, when Nick went on T.I.'s podcast and said this. <laughs> and this, this, this mother <laughs> drop a song, like, talking shit, like oh, ca man. calling her all kinds of bitches and all uh, I'm like, this is my wife. This is my new wife. Ooh. I got it, like, and, and it I, was hard. I wrote a, been hard. yeah, I wrote a letter first. I wrote a night. This was like, right, I believe right when, I don't even know if Twitter had came out yet. Right, right during that time when social media just started popping. So I wrote this long ass letter, uh -huh. pretty much saying, look, I respect you as an artist. Right. I'm actually a fan. I think you are one of the best to ever do it. But from man to man, you talking out of pocket to my wife, you got to be held accountable for that. So I need to see you face to face. I can dig that. And that's all I was saying. Like, face to face, let's get to it. I can now, dig and whatever that. happens when we face to face, happy. According to Nick, Eminem crossed the line, and he actually wanted to fight him, but it didn't get to that. Eminem decided to reply to Nick with a ruthless verse on Fat Joe's song called Lord Above. The verse says, I know me and Mariah didn't end on a high note, but that other dude's whip he got him neutered, tried to tell him this chick's a nut job, before he got his jewels clipped, almost got my caboose kicked, full quit, you're not gonna do sh**. I let her chop my balls off before too, before I lost to you, Nick. After trolling Eminem on Instagram, Nick dropped a diss track called The Invitation. It was the worst diss track in history. Despite mentioning Haley and Eminem's wife on the track, it was still a huge flop and garnered over 600,000 dislikes and comments. Yet Eminem didn't reply. Despite the negative comments, Nick dropped another diss track, Pray For Him, which was even worse than the former. The first comment on Nick's diss video was, Eminem is so good that he made history, the first rapper to win a rap battle without even rapping. Nick tried again with another diss track called Invitation Cancelled, hoping to rile Eminem up. 
This time, he just focused on the racist tapes and didn't say much aside from that. The comments came and they were brutal on Mick. It was the third diss track in just 11 days, and yet there was no reply from Eminem. Mick went all over social media claiming that he won and dragging out the issue, but no one appeared to think he even scratched Eminem's reputation at all. Instead, fans tore him to shreds on social media. Mick finally admitted that he only did all this to try and get Eminem on his TV show Wild and Out. So while Mick's TV career is going great, he'll probably never drop another track ever, because his beef with Eminem closed that chapter. That's all from us. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video.